What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they're out of Milton, Delaware, and this is their Utopias a Barrel Aged 120 Minute IPA. So they're calling this one an Imperial IPA that is aged in Samuel Adams Utopias barrels for an entire year. It comes in at 17% alcohol by volume, 120 IBUs at the time of review. This bottle is just under two months old. So this is one of the newest releases from Dogfish Head, and I'm super pumped to give it a go. They have done the Utopia's Barrel Age Worldwide Stout, which I haven't reviewed, but I do have a bottle of it in my cellar. I might review it later this year. But when I saw they released this one, I was like, I got to give it a go. I got to give it a review, which is funny because I have not reviewed uh, 120 Minute on my channel at all. Now, I prefer 120 minute with a couple years of age on it, if not significant age on it, because one thing um, that you may have learned watching the channel, but if you haven't watched the channel, this is your first time, I do not love huge, boozy, hop forward beers. So if you give me a triple IPA that's 10 and a half, 11% and I can taste the booze, I'm usually not into it. And that's the issue I have with 120 minute fresh. Um, it's just too boozy. And I just, something about the booze in conjunction with the, the hops that kind of just bothered me to some degree. So this one being aged for a year, it's already aged uh, for me. And then you introduce the Utopias barrels. I think I'm going to enjoy this fresh. I don't know. Now, I did not buy a four pack of it. But if I do enjoy this, I might buy a bottle or two and throw it into uh, the cellar and see how it ages. Um, I was able to grab a single of this and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, how the how is the, I guess, the, like that? I'm trying to figure out the Danger Cap logo. I don't know. I guess you could do it like that or like that. It doesn't matter. No. Anyway, into the hashtag proper glassware, just because it's a dogfish head glass. So, ooh. I feel like this is going to have like a American barley wine kind of feel to it, but just being in Utopias barrels. Now, Samuel Adams Utopias, um, I've had numerous vintages of it and I love it, but it is crazy expensive in the U.S. It's insane how expensive. I mean, in my area, it's like $250 to $300 for a bottle of it. That's insane. It's just like a good spirit, right? But that is ridiculous. Um, but if you ever find like a bar that you can get like a one ounce pour for like 10 to 15 bucks, do it. I think everyone should try that uh, a beer out once in their life, um, but I don't advocate buying an entire bottle of it, but you know, to each their own. Everybody you know, has different opinions on values of beer and whatnot. So um, yeah, that this has the etching at the bottom uh, that promotes the carbonation. I've had this glass for like 10, 12 years. It's been a long time. Uh, so there's actually, this. there's a 12 ounce line and this went just above the 12 ounce line. They give me 13 ounces. Let's see, if I, if I sit it down, let's see. Yeah, there's like 13 ounces in here as opposed to 12, maybe 12 and a half. That's interesting. Anyway, it has like this deep, rusty kind of, it looks like an American, like an old school American barley wine. Uh, had about a finger of an eggshell white. Um, well, let's see if I can whip one back up here, but it has a, uh, yeah, about a half finger. I would say eggshell white, and eggshell white into almost like a light tan colored, but it's just painted to a thin film. Um, it's 17%. I don't anticipate the <sighs> the head hanging around. Yeah, you hold it up to the, to the light. It's like rust color. Um, there's some decent clarity. I can see my hand through it, but like not perfectly. A little bit of a gentle haze to it. But yeah, it looks beautiful. It absolutely looks beautiful in this glass. No doubt. Anyway, let's get a nose. I'm, I'm expecting some crazy aromas here. And yep. Oh my God, what is that? So I haven't had Utopias in a while. I always used to get like maple. And a lot, a lot of times they would have... I don't know, I think each um, vintage is different, but I would always get like a lot of sweetness, like a maple, brown sugar, caramelized sugars, right? This just smells right to me right now like sherry or like a port wine. It has like sweet cherry notes. There's definitely vanilla. Oh, and then there's brown sugar. There's a little bit of molasses. There's definitely car caramelized like and, and, and like brown sugar. Now, they do dry hop this one, so they take their 120-minute, they age it for a year in the Utopias barrels, and then they dry hop it after it comes out of the barrels. I'm not really getting a lot of hop character here. This smells like a, just like a good old ale barley wine. Um, not like quite like an English barley wine, but maybe like it's, it has a little bit of a sweeter note here. What else is there? There's caramel, there's toffee. It's a fruitiness here. And again, that I just, I'm getting like sherry and port wine. I don't know why. It has to be the barrel, right? Just perceiving that kind of um, port wine, sherry yes kind of feel. I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you. This smells amazing. 
<laughs> now, did I think this was gonna smell amazing? I thought there was a chance, but this smells better than I anticipated. And I always say don't go into reviews preconceived notions, but knowing 120 minute and I've had it aged before, I've had it fresh, so on and so forth, I did not expect this. This smells awesome. And the carbonation, it looks like a, 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 a swimming pool that has the filter on. And it's just like, you see, I wish I had a better camera. I show you just like the carbonation is rising in the middle and like spreading everything out. It's fucking, it looks wild. Anyway, this smells phenomenal. Does it smell like an Imperial IPA aged in any kind of barrels? Not really. I wouldn't tell you this is an IPA at all. Kind of smells like a barley wine to me or an old ale. Anyway, let's get into it. Hopefully it's delicious. Cheers, everyone. That is divine. This is a big beer though. This is, listen, if you don't like big beers, do not, do not consider grabbing this one. That, the ethanol, like alcohol, as I swallowed it, it was like I was Godzilla. I just, the alcohol just went out my nose and out my mouth like I'm breathing fire. It is super fucking boozy. Do I care? Not really, not really, if we're being honest. Buying this, this is full body. It's thick, it's syrupy. It is, even though I say that, I would not guess 17% based on the body alone. I'd guess like 13, 14. So I wouldn't say it's thin because it's, it's to me, it's not really thin. It's just, I don't know. I feel like if I'm drinking a 17% beer, it's like drinking like maple syrup and it's not quite that. But the body is more than appropriate. The mouthfeel, decent carbonation here. Uh, mild approaching, it's mild to moderate, but more approaching moderate carbonation. There's a nice kind of smoothness on the palate, but that booziness kind of, <laughs> it, it, it hits you. Definite sipper. But the flavors here are fucking world class. It's absurd how tasty this beer is. So, body appropriate. Mouthfeel, pretty good. Booziness, substantial. I feel it in my chest, I feel it in my throat, I feel it in my face, I feel it, you know, breathing out. It's big, it's boozy, it's 17%. Um, so it doesn't hide the booze, but the flavors for me are so good that I don't give a shit. The one thing I will say about this one, as I cannot tell this is a hop forward beer of any kind. Like, to me, doing this blind, there's no way I call this an Imperial IPA age in any kind of barrel, right? I would guess probably American barley wine because there is a little bit of hop character on the finish. But I don't know if I'd lock in American barley wine. Anyway, let's try to dissect this one. It's gonna be a longer review, so strap in and or turn off. Either way. <laughs> the complexity of the sugars in this one and, and the and the different kind of um you know caramelized sugars especially just through the roof. There's there's again caramel, there's toffee, there's brown sugar. There's molasses. There's just a lot of just sweeter characters at the front. There's a little, there's like a mild, like dark chocolate. There's a, right after that, there's a big fruitiness. And it's like, to me, like a deep, dark cherry, um, darker stone fruits, but more cherry than every, than anything. Maybe even like a lighter, like stone fruit, like even, perhaps even like an apricot. There's a slight breadiness as well from the malt. But as it continues to transition through the palate, like halfway through, um, I start getting more of the barrel and more of like the hop character from the base beer. The vanilla hits me. There's oak. There's that sherry, that port wine, um, that perceived sherry and port wine, which is just the Utopias barrel. There might be even a soft maple throughout the palate, but I, I can't. I don't really want to lock that in because I can't say for sure. But there's so much going on here. It's very complex. As it rides on through to the finish, the hops hit um, with, what is here? There's like a spiciness to the hops. Almost like a rye, like almost you're drinking rye whiskey. Or if like a, you know, a rye whiskey blended with like a port wine or a sherry, right? It has that kind of feeling on the finish for me. But then the booziness also hits and kind of, you know, starts uh, covering up the finish. So it's hard to really say what is hitting my palate on the finish. This is semi to full on dry. 
A mild to moderate bitterness, and the bitterness I'm getting is more like oak tannin driven. Like there's an oak tannin bitterness and dryness kind of hitting. Um, a little bit, I, obviously the hops are doing a, their job in terms of the uh, bitterness. And the alcohol is probably lending itself to the dryness a little bit. This is though pretty sweet, but I think it, it doesn't balance it out on the finish, but it does a good enough job with the dryness and the hop kind of uh, bitterness or the bitterness in general to kind of offset a little bit. Still, at 70%, I just feel the beer is going to be sweet to begin with, but it's not cloying. I'm going to drink up the rest of this. I'm going to be feeling insanely good. I'm already slurring my words, and I, I'm, all I'm drinking is this. This is fucking delicious. I am, if I can, and I don't know if there's any available uh, left uh, locally, but if I can buy two more bottles of this, I would love to see this in a year, and then I'd like to see this in like five years. Um, I want to see how this beer changes. Because right now, it doesn't, to me, it has remnants of 120 Minute, but I feel like the barrel itself is very vibrant and in your face and kind of like the predominant note. And I love that. But at its soul, I don't really think it's 120 minute, if that makes sense. Like, there is no way I do this blind and call it 120 minute aged in barrels. Any kind of barrels. I just don't. This is like an American barley wine kind of blended with like an English barley wine or an old ale. Um, but it's fucking awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah. There's not much more to say about it. I think I've probably said enough. It's probably been running for like 15 minutes. So I'm just going to rate it. So Utopia's Barrel Aged uh, 120 Minute IPA from Dogfish Head. Um, yeah, I, I can see this getting a little bit better. So I'm not going to give it a crazy you know high score, aka a 5 out of 5. But I'm going to give it a crazy high score, aka I'm going to give this a straight 4.75 out of 5. This is awesome. This is awesome. This has exceeded any expectations I had for this one. Um, you know, when it comes to a lot of the dogfish had big fucking danger caps, like they can go sideways. They can be amazing. This did not go sideways. This is amazing. I am so curious to know what other people thought about this one. Um, if you're somebody like me who doesn't like 120 fresh, still try this out fresh. And then again, maybe grab a four pack of it. So you think, I might grab a whole four pack of it, another four pack. I don't know. Like I'd like to sit this down in the cellar and try one maybe every year, like one year, two year, five year, 10 year, something like that. I don't know. Um, this is better than I anticipated. So uh, price by availability, that was, uh, I think it was $39.99 a four pack, like most of these uh, 120 and worldwide styles and stuff. An individual bottle, I think was $10.99. I paid 11 bucks for that bottle all day, every day, 17%. That complexity, that taste, four, seven, five out of five. All day, every day, and availability, I would say wherever you see Dogfish Head, you should see this one, but I don't know. Uh, so this is where I ask you, have you seen this one? And if so, where are you located? I would love to know, uh, where this made distro did, you know, did it go to all of their distro, um, areas or just hit certain areas? Um, again, I'm hoping I'm able to, next time I go to the beer store, I'm going to seek out a couple bottles of this, if not a four pack, sit some down in the cellar and revisit it. Now it makes me even more excited to try out the uh, Utopia Sparrow Age Worldwide Stout, which I have in my cellar. Uh, probably should have drank one fresh and then, you know, reviewed that one down the line, but I've been just sitting on it. Uh, cause you know, when it comes to these 17% beers, it's like, you know, especially with me, if you follow the channel, you know, the health issues the last couple of years and whatnot, like I can't really drink beers like this all the time. Uh, you know, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm probably gonna take two hours to drink this. You might be like two hours. Yeah. I gotta take my time with it. Can't fucking have it. So, um, you know, I'm not going to drink 17% beers all the time. And, uh, this was a rare exception because I really wanted to try it. And here we are. So my goal is to drink, uh, review a fresh 120 and then maybe an aged one at some point, And then maybe I'll revisit this one in the next year or two. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. If you've had this one, post in the comment section. Like I said, this is a big, boozy monster, 17%, 17 but it's kind of like a spirit where you want to sit, contemplate it, um, sip on it, and enjoy it over a couple hour period and just enjoy yourself. And that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, to the next one. Cheers.